This is MuggleCast, your Harry Potter and Fantastic Beasts podcast covering everything about J.K. Rowling's Wizarding World. Welcome to MuggleCast episode 293. Eric and I are here this week. No Micah. He's we are Micahless. Insert something funny here about why Micah is not on the show this week. He, he had a work commitment. As we're starting to do more MuggleCast, that may come up a little more often. But anyway, we have two great people filling in for Micah this week, including Selena. Hello, Selena. Hi, guys. Great to have you on today's episode because you have been covering Curse Child a lot on Hypeable. So oh my god, yes. Uh, you, I think you know more about the situation than I do. <laughs> <laughs> it's, been, it's been so funny. Like I'm basically thinking like, you know, we're all we're talking about Pottermore and I'm like, maybe I'm just bitter that I'm not the Pottermore correspondent. So that's why I've like jumped on. <laughs> oh, so you feel like the Pottermore correspondent now? Uh, I do. I do. I, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, it is. It is. And also joining us is Brittany Lovely of Hypable. She's a writer. She's been with us for a few years and her first time on MuggleCast. So welcome to the show, Brittany. Woo! Hi! There's an equal ratio of guys and girls on MuggleCast for maybe the first time. How long has it been (laughs) since that happened, if ever? Yeah, you're right. First time. Not the first time. You have to have been Laura and Elisa and then only two of the guys. (laughs) I don't know if that's ever happened before. You know, I could look it up. A listener will know. Yeah. Uh, Yeah, I, I have the technology. I will look that up. But um, Brit- anyway, it's, it's it's still very exciting. Brittany, yes. nice to meet you. This is our podcast uh, debut uh, as a as a duet. As, Brittany knows uh, all about the show, though. She's been a, oh, she's fantastic. been a listener forever. So right, Brittany. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yep. Cool. So let's get right into the cursed child news. The big news, like we just said, were these first looks at eight different characters harry Ginny, and albus came first then there was ron hermione and rose and then on day three on thursday there was draco and scorpius mm. so let's break it down by the photos we'll start with harry Ginny, and albus so the reason that these photos are being released now is because the cursed child begins preview performances next week believe uh. it or not it's actually here selena <sighs> and i will be there we'll be there we'll be there we well, were Brittany will be there too right Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. No, unfortunately not. Oh. We're going to periscope you guys in. We're going to be live streaming. <laughs> that the, will be so illegal and awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell anyone, guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shoot. I forgot people could hear this. Uh, um, so th- so they decided to release these first looks at the characters, and they did a good job with them. They've, they've taken these beautiful portraits of the characters. It's our first time learning about who's playing who other than the trio. Mm. Yes. So let's start with... Harry, Ginny, and Albus. Um, where do we even begin here? <laughs> uh, let's start with Albus, right? He yeah. may or may not be the cursed child. <laughs> he's the cursed child. He he's no, I was telling you guys, he's not the cursed child. It's you don't too believe- easy. Even Selena thinks something up. else is cursed and they have to fix it, right? If I'm remembering correctly. He- not Harry's kid. Not hashtag not my cursed child. <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't. We'll get there. I have a prediction related to that. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I just think it's so easy. Like, oh, I don't know. Well, uh, Albus looks great. He mm-hmm. he looks great. He's wearing in thanks to a little interview in Pottermore. We found out that the actor who's playing him, Sam Clement, was take when he took this photo. He was imagining himself wearing James, meaning his older brother James's cloak. So that's why he's kind of gripping it and feeling a little insecure ah. about it. Yeah. So I guess that kind of explains his positioning in it. Um, and he's cute. So I'm all about it. That is interesting. He's super I, cute. Someone told he, me, someone pointed out he looks a little bit like Rupert Grint. Yeah. Which I thought was funny. Yeah, I guess I could see that. Eric, what do you think? Uh, I I like him a lot. Actually, I like uh, this, you know, Harry, Ginny, Albus, love it actually um it's nice to get a first look i mean i know it was kind of due but it's it's really nice to see this this is the first sort of this was the first look at cursed child essentially Mm -hmm. um and and i support it yeah i think i think the three of them harry for the first time i know we saw an image of the trio before and we were just like oh my god harry looks like ron ron looks like harry (laughs) What are we going to do with ourselves? Yeah. Uh, but now that we finally have a photo of Jamie Parker 
with the scar and the glasses. Uh, it's uh, all concerns are are uh, put to rest. Yeah, they do really look like a good good Potter family to me. Uh, let's, I think so. Let, let's, well, hmm. uh, speaking of Ginny, though, there was actually some controversy. Yes. So there, uh, well, actually, first I started all, that. <laughs> you started the controversy. What did you do? What did you do, Selena? No, I didn't. I just, you know, people were um, sort of focusing. Well, you can talk about it. You were going to talk about it anyway. Okay, so she's got it. a very nice. Would you would you say it's a cardigan or a sweater? I can never tell. I'm not good with fashion. Um, is it like that. It's a sweater. It's, sweater. it's just a very soft, it's kind of like a mom sweater, um, you know, kind of like in the tradition of Weasley sweaters, although not as god awful. Um, and there was actually, there were some people I saw complaining because Ginny was just, you know, looking like a mom instead of this complete badass that we're used to from the books. And what happened to Ginny, everybody? And, and why isn't Ginny more of like in an action pose or... Yeah. Things like that, but um, so, you know, apart, uh, yeah, go on. Well, so I was going to ask Selena, do, do you you feel this way? Don't you? Well, yeah, yes and no. I mean, I I feel like there was some confusion because I did on Hypable. I wrote up a piece on Jenny and why I'm sort of I'm I'm pleasantly surprised she's involved with the play to this extent, and I'm sort of hoping that the play will give us some of the Jenny that the movies denied us because we all know Jenny in the movies was awful. No fault of, of Bonnie Wright, in my opinion, but, yeah. you know, this is like, this is a, a, a second chance, basically, for us to get brand new interpretations of these characters. So that sort of first look of her in this close, people have pointed out that she looks a lot like Molly, Molly Weasley, that she's kind of like emulating her mother. And they're like, what's wrong with Molly? And I'm like, nothing, <laughs> but this is Ginny. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's it's not the same type of, I feel like Ginny you know, has a lot of a different role and sort of seeing her go into this this mom role, maybe for me it was like, okay, yeah, but she was a professional Quidditch player and she was really awesome, but it's just close. I just want to make that clear. Like, I'm not basing my opinion on her based on what she's wearing. Right. It was just like a first impression kind of, oh, I wonder what they're going to do with her. Well, also, gonna- also when you consider that she's wearing this sweater and yet Hermione in the other photo is wearing more of a cloak. How do you there then? is that Molly vibe to it that mm-hmm. I feel like isn't. I mean, it's fine, but it's not maybe what I would have hoped for for Ginny. What do you, what like, do you think, oh, Brittany? Yeah. Well, Brittany. she's still she's still the kid at home, mm-hmm. yeah. right? So I, I have a feeling that it's more of um, like, yeah, she was this great character and she went on to play Quidditch and she was a badass and all that, but she's kind of like reverted into a home life role at least based on that photo. Well, why, why can't it be both? Why can't it be that she is, you know, this mother here for this family portrait? After all, in your family portrait, you kind of look more like a family than you do in real life. Uh, versus, uh, th- there, w- there was a post, um, somebody from uh, MuggleNet, Beth, uh, wrote, To all the people on the internet complaining about Jenny looking to, quote, mom, please, for me, this picture this woman in bright green Quidditch robe speeding down the pitch Please imagine this woman in her badass headshot in the Daily Prophet next to all her articles. See, just because she can also rock a mom look does not make her any less badass. Uh, She looks fantastic. But it's so true. And that's the thing is that we're obviously like all we have. There's been nothing of Ginny in this play before now. We didn't even know she was in it other than she had a wand. So, of course, this is accurate. Like, this is true. The only reason you can you can react to a picture like this is because we've had nothing else. So we're like, yeah. okay, well, what does this mean for the character of Ginny? Like, what does this mean for the role she's going to play? Is she going to be the, like, because we already figure she's going to be kind of in the background. And I'm just, you know, I'm just a big Ginny fan, okay? And I just care a lot. <laughs> yeah. well, and, and, and that's and I think that's that's completely valid to worry as well that, that Ginny will suffer the same fate the character will as she did in the movies. But, you know, if exactly. the story is, exactly. is too much that's about right. Harry and she's just the love interest for Harry. And right. I but think it's clothes, too... It's just clothes. Like, obviously, it, we know that. Right. It's the character right. isn't defined by what she wears. So with that in mind, let's move on from Ginny, and I'm sure we'll have more to say about her. But maybe, maybe Selena, or maybe people who are worried about it will be proven wrong, and then we'll all be yeah, happy. Yeah, I'm sure we will. 
Speaking of this group photo of the three of them, though, Selena also did a, a funny mashup that freaked a lot of people out, including myself. If you if you reverse this image and put it next to the photo of Harry looking into the mirror of Erised in the Sorcerer's Stone movie, you will see basically it's the s- same thing. Guys, yeah. this freaked me out too. I was I was writing up an article actually about Ginny, and I was saying, oh, can she's I find just this? like. You can, it's on our Twitter. Um, but, but I was just saying basically like, oh, she's, you know, basically been put in the background. She's part of Harris. Harris said fit. And then I like, I stopped typing and I was like, <laughs> hold the phone. And I like, I went in reverse and realized, yeah, yeah, it's, it's basically. And what is so amazing about that is basically what we're looking at. And I don't know if this was intentional, but I feel like it had to be is that basically Harry looked into the air said age 11 and saw himself in the middle. And now when he's old, he got what he wanted. He's just not in the middle. He's just on the side. But that's what he saw in the era set. And it came true. Yeah. And it was like, oh, my God. So and everyone else clearly and, had the same reaction. And the other thing that's freaking me out about it is that Ginny and Lily both have their hands on yes. <laughs> Albus and Harry, respectively. So it, it really is a mirrored image. If you look at mm-hmm. this, it's just, it's wild. I, I really wonder if they did this on purpose or it's a freaky coincidence. Either way, like if it's not on purpose, that's equally amazing because yeah. that just shows that he got exactly what he always wanted and like no one ever, like it's not a big deal kind of, yeah. but it's basically what he wanted. And it also yeah. makes you, f- I sent it to Eric. It also okay. makes you I, feel. Oh, I can't find this. Where? where oh, I sent it over text to okay. you. Okay. Thank it also, you. It also makes you feel like they, that this play really matters now. I don't know. That's yeah. the sense I got. It was yes. like, okay, I get it now. I get this. Me too. I really? had like the same thing. Like, like that was like the moment I was like, oh my God, this is really happening. Like I've been so low key about it. I don't know. Have you seen it, Brittany? Um, yes, you retweeted me being yeah. calling you rude. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I also cry every time I see Jamie Parker, so it's really bad. Why? Oh. Do, you, do you know him from something else? No, it's just because um, when they released that behind the scenes video with J.K. Rowling being like, no spoilers, please. Um, I saw him in the rehearsals and I was like, oh, my God, it's Harry. And I started crying. Oh. And now the photos came out and I just can't handle it. Yeah. Let's talk mm-hmm. about Harry, actually, in this group photo once again. He's kind of in the dark compared to the to compared to Albus and Ginny. It's a metaphor. I think it is a metaphor. <laughs> I really think so. He, oh, do you notice this is how creepy? He looks? I'm just seeing the photo now. That's really right? creepy. Right? Wow. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Go on. Does Amazing. anyone else think it's it's a metaphor? It's it hints at that Harry may be the one who's more disturbed or more I don't know uh, battling some serious demons more than Albus. Could be. I, I mean, they're he's... both going to. Yeah. But he's battling them in the background, whereas Albus has to uh, battle them in, in the, the foreground. foreground. Mm-hmm. Love it. Okay. Okay. Into that. Into that. <sighs> Anything else to say about these photos? Well, the age... He looks like his dad. Sorry, I was just going to say that had Jamie Parker, like, he looks like James Potter in the movies, which I know wasn't intentional. I just think it's well, kind of that's cool. just that's how he's supposed to. I mean, yeah, yeah, like yeah. Harry, I know, Harry's but I love supposed that. Supposed to look so much he's like l- James. It's supposed and like, to look like James. Yeah. yeah, yeah, which is really cool. I I, I like that a lot, actually. Um, I will also say there was uh, there seemed to be uh, not more controversy, but there was a question about the age of uh, the actors of the child actors because. Yes. Uh, and I think it was confirmed that this is, in fact, taking place 19 years later, not 20, not 21 years later. Um, whereas the children who are 11 uh, as their characters are actually much older. I, I think yeah. probably 14, 16, something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think they're adults. Think oh, they're really? These are beyond. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, just, oh, well. yeah, all this is 23. Mm-hmm. Really? <laughs> Sam, Sam Clement. Yeah, Sam Clement. <laughs> Oh but God. the reason for this, because I know a lot of people have complained about this, but the thing is, and this is like so, sort of an, an obvious answer, but if if they had cast age-appropriate actors, they would have to switch them out all the time. Like we would have a, a bunch of Albuses and a bunch of Roses and a bunch of Scorpiuses and like because of child labor laws and stuff and there's two plays a week. So I think the reason they've aged them up is because then we will have faces 
like we will have first of all really talented actors who've been in the business for longer right, we'll have faces cool. we can put on these kids and they'll actually be like you look at them you'll be like oh that's albus and and probably they have big roles in the play too so you don't want just like random kids on the stage and also i mean we also have to think it's on a stage so it's going to be further away like i think it's better to have one solid albus who's older than to have five albuses who are age appropriate personally yeah you know they're going to lose something either way and you know what? When I look at Sam, who's playing Albus, I don't, I don't see. He doesn't look older to me. I could no, honestly put him fine. in Chamber of Secrets or Sorcerer's Stone, and I think he would mesh right in with the other kids. Yeah. And with more makeup, they could maybe make his face look a little clearer. Not, not that his face isn't clear, but like just make it look a little younger to help the illusion. And plus, as Selena said, they're going to be on a stage, so the distance will probably help as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> Yeah, I'm happy with this. I think it's more important that these actors have a presence than that they're I, the right age. I you know? agree. And I think with I older agree. actors, quote unquote, older actors, you're going to get stronger performances. Yeah, exactly. So one other thing I wanted to mention with these three is that Albus is called Albus, not Albus Severus. Yes. <laughs> How do we feel about this? Thank God. Yeah. Uh, you know, Poor Snape. The, the thing, well, this was this was a... This was a revelation I had because, and it was recently too, all right? I think I asked it on this show. I'm like, wait a minute, is Albus Severus hyphenated? And so because it's not, like he was just called that in the epilogue to get the point across that that's his middle name, but they don't actually refer to him constantly as Albus Severus, right? Albus Severus is what Ginny would call him if she were angry with him to clean his room, you know, like Albus Severus Potter, you get upstairs right now, sir. Uh, you know, they they just call him, probably they just call him Al. Which is great. Like, yeah, I really am thankful for that. <laughs> so was it that when J.K. Rowling put those names in Deathly Hallows all those years ago, was it a bit of, bit of fan service? May, well, I, but it's also like that's their full name. So it's like she was being the most formal that she could with so that we would know, you know, because it's like that's how I feel about it. But I also... Yeah, I, I would have to reread the epilogue, but I don't I don't know if like Harry like refers to him as Albus Severus Potter um, or actually he does. But it's to prove a point because of his. Um, yeah, concern. I think in the movie he's like Albus Severus Potter. But in the in the epilogue, it's more like you were named, you know, it's more focused on why he was named after it as opposed to name name checking him, you know, I see. Okay. But I mean, I'm, I'm sure he would prefer. I mean, every kid's got nicknames, right? From time to time. Yeah. yeah. So whether it's Albus or or just Al, uh, I think would be would be really cool. You never call Dumbledore Al, so it would be a way to distinguish them. I always call him Albus Brian Wolfric Percival <laughs> Dumbledore. <laughs> Full name every time. <laughs> Wolfric. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So uh, next three, let's talk about Hermione, Ron, and Rose Granger Yay! hyphen Weasley. <laughs> yes. <laughs> She Lots kept her name. <laughs> so, yeah, obviously this was a highly anticipated reveal because um, Hermione is black in the play. There was a little more backlash, not as much as we saw the first time when it was revealed. Thank gosh. Mm. But, yeah, there's a lot to talk about with this. What, what stood out to y'all first? I, I like the daughter a lot, actually. Yes. Um, Who is Sh also black. Uh, Sherelle Skeet. Um uh, it just looks very, uh, what's the word, rambunctious or intelligent and like, she yes. like sort of a troublemaker, but sort of, she she just looks just like, like she, Weasley. <laughs> she embodies, yeah, a Granger hyphen Weasley. She really embodies, I think, the, the traits of, uh, of both outwardly, uh, which is probably hard to do. Um, but, uh, but I, I, so I think she's excellently cast um, for sure. And you know what, guys? I mean, clearly, Ron and Hermione are still together. Look how happy they are. <laughs> Look how happy you are. I can hear it from over here. I can hear it from I'm across so the ocean. Relieved. God, just look at Ron's face. Like, I want to talk more about Hermione and, and uh, Rose because it's, they're so awesome. But just look how happy he is. Like, he it is. just makes me, it just warms my heart, you know? Uh, Gina, Gina had a really, really funny uh, tweet earlier, but she said it to me, too. Uh, the, the, the one thing I hate about cursed child photos is that Ron is wearing stripes. Uh, 
Do they think we can't recognize him without the stripes? <laughs> Actually, <laughs> That's the, a good the, point. The stripes have persisted, everybody. Oh, yeah. The stripes from 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 Deathly Hallows on over. Ron Weasley is still in stripes. Actually, mm-hmm. what struck me about Ron was what he was wearing, like the stripes and then the plaid scarf. Is that <laughs> Is it's that more fashion stri- forward? I don't think that is. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I it's- think. I mean, honestly, it's a little bit sad, but I feel like it's like they're overemphasizing that. Oh, look, he's funny. You know, it's like a little <laughs> yeah. much. It's like exaggerated for the it, stage. Yeah, it does feel exaggerated because it's, it's, like- it's more of a decorative scarf, right? It's not. I mean, because. Otherwise, he would be wearing house colors. No, you know that Ron put that on in the morning. It was like, I look good. Yeah, I you look know? good. Like, that was a fashion choice. Plaid on stripes, looking good. I'm going to wear a plaid on stripes to the play. Actually, you should. I just wore plaid on stripes yesterday by accident. But now I know it's a faux pas and I should never do it again. Thanks, yeah. Ron Weasley. I mean, I'm no yeah. expert, but my first impression was... Eh. <laughs> <laughs> See, now we can talk about fashion. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um. <laughs> and then Hermione is wearing a, a what looks like a cloak of some sort. Yeah, it's like a mystery outfit, kind of like a like. Snape thing. Yeah, too, with the like the high collar, the way it's like. Yeah, that's true. Kinda... Or just like something they would wear in the ministry. And I also noticed her wand is very long. It's also probably for the play. Yeah, but then Don't you, you look at Ron's, and it doesn't look as long, does it? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah comparatively. No, Hermione's got, I mean, that's probably 14 to 16 inches. Uh, I feel like yes. they made longer ones for the play. I Yeah, I and would say like, so. Kind of have to see them from the back, you know, the, the back row, mm-hmm. even. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I, that makes sense to me. And also, I mean, in the books, that's how they are. They are There are 14 to 16 inch ones in the books described all the time. But like, when you think about it, it's like, that's a big one to hold yeah to stow to do everything with so i don't know it's to me it's kind of like a return to basics you know they're not and the other thing is and i love this about these wands is they they do have character still but they are kind of more seemingly understated they don't have like car none of them are made out of bone okay yeah so you know i i i just I, i applaud that choice to get back to sort of something that's a lot similar to what was in the actual books regarding wands yeah agreed and um i just wanted to say on hermione like i do i think i mean i said this before when she was first cast i think she looks so good and she i cannot wait to see how what kind of hermione she's gonna be because that's like another thing that i love about this casting too is that it's finally giving us an alternative to the movies, you know, because there, we've had so many people say, oh, I don't like it. It doesn't look like Emma Watson or it doesn't look like Rupert Grint or whatever. And it's like, no, but that was just one version. Like that's just Christopher Columbus casting a bunch of 10 year olds. Like that's not, you know, they've had, they've embodied these characters for so long, but it was a book series. Like these characters are book characters and just yeah, giving us another, right. Yeah. And giving us another canon version of these characters regardless of what is the same and what is not the same hair and height and age and skin color and all these things are just things and now we're going to get to see another group of people embody these characters and bring them bring another spin on what we read about in the books and i just think that's fantastic i just i'm so happy yeah me too so getting over to oh Brittany, were you gonna say something Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, I think I'm more excited to see the kids than the older yeah, characters, just because, like Selena was saying, you have all of this uh, stuff from canon from the books that you didn't really get to see in some of the characters, but you might be able to see more of it and how their kids are developed. And I think that'll mm-hmm. be really interesting to see on the stage. Plus, I'm just obsessed with the casting of Rose. I'm She looks yeah. amazing, <laughs> and she is more like Ron than I imagined, which is odd to say based on a photo, but I just, I'm very excited. She's not a carbon copy of Hermione. And, and how about the last name? Okay. Let's talk about this here. How about Rose Granger hyphen Weasley entering (laughs) the world and, and, and Hermione not taking Ron's name in the marriage. Good. I mean, why should she, Uh, you know, this is a common debate in society. Like if you want to take a name, sure. But if you, I mean, you know, you've got Granger and you've got Weasley. What do you rather? What would you rather be? You know. 
Yeah. It's a it, nice last name. What I what I like about this, and Granger is a fine last name. What I like about it most is I was kind of thinking to myself, oh, gee, what do I think about this? But then it dawned on me that Granger is, because she's muggle-born, Hermione is, mm-hmm. uh, Granger is a muggle name. Yeah, and, she's holding and, on to her muggle hair. it's entirely heritage. muggle. And so in a world where all this pure blood mayhem and mania has just ceased uh, with the final battle, uh, Hermione, as she ro- rises to, to prominence in her career, uh, you know, and and everything like that is maintaining her Muggle. Oh my God, roots. I love that. Yeah, yeah. right. And and right. so like, and their kid is Granger hyphen Weasley. She is half Granger half Weasley, but it still sort of preserves that that Muggle aspect. If that, because that's mm-hmm. not. I mean, Weasley is is a known name, right? The Weasleys, although some say they're blood traders, are a a a, a prominent <laughs> wizard. Some would family. say not Eric, certainly. Some, some no, some. no, no, no. Uh, there are. <laughs> But we 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 know this from the books. They're a prominent wizarding family, and so Weasley would be instantly recognizable to other wizards. Whereas Granger, I think, really does play up and emphasize the Muggle connection. So yeah, and for Granger that reason, Weasley is like the union of Muggleborn and pure blood. Exactly. My gosh, Eric, this is so cool. I love it. You too. So <laughs> something else we wanted to mention is it's possible that Rose may be a Hufflepuff. Mm. Selena, you noticed some certain colors sneaking through the the outer cloak, didn't you? Here I go again. (laughs) Guys, this has been so much fun these past few days. Like, I, oh my God, it's like 2007 again. Yes, I did. Um, If you look at the pictures, in both pictures actually, her cardigan has a line of yellow. And obviously the other two, we're going to talk about the last two in a second, but the other two have pre-sorting robes. And Rose looks like she has pre-sorting robe too, except for this yellow cardigan. Yeah. So it's like, what does it mean? Is she a Hufflepuff? Like that could legitimately be a clue that she's a Hufflepuff. Or yeah. it could be totally random, but I feel like it's not. Well, I can't imagine another scenario why she would be wearing what she's wearing with something that's yellow. It exactly. Just, it just, that is what she wear is wearing in Hogwarts most likely. And why else would you wear yellow? So... So yeah, I think I think uh, that was a good catch, and I think you might be right, which would of course be a big surprise given Ron and Hermione both being in Gryffindor. You know, yeah, that is a, that is actually why I think it's most surprising too. And and I mean, if Hermione was an almost Ravenclaw, why isn't mm-hmm, their kid mm-hmm. uh, also in Ravenclaw then instead? You know, I, I think they would need to or they should explain more about sorting. Maybe it's come a long way in nineteen years, or just yeah, how see, that's I think possible. It has. I think it has like I have so many I have so many theories this but um but about like how sorting it's a lot less like if Harry can say to his kid it's okay if you're in Slytherin you know sorting's come a long way and I feel like we could be looking at a situation where Rose like we know she's a lot like her mother we know she has the whole Weasley pressure to be a Gryffindor maybe she's like screw this I'm gonna get my own house like I don't want to be defined by my wit or my bravery I want to be something else yeah Or you could just have like this house unity sweater and there's like all four colors on it. We just can't see those. The other stripes are in the back. (laughs) You know what's actually making me really excited right now? I just realized that there may be a sorting ceremony in the play. I think there will be. Since we don't know any spoilers, we're going to be watching it live and it's going to be like the first time. And it's going to be, (laughs) I'm going to be anxious. I'm I'm (laughs) going to have a panic attack over it. I'm we gonna, we really boo. should we really should take a moment and preview the this. I know it's it may have been said in passing, but guys, the next Muggle Cast episode you will have seen by the time the next episode comes around, you will have seen this entire play, both parts, both yeah. parts. Just talking about this now, I'm like, oh my gosh, nine years <laughs> since the last story. Uh, well, I was gonna ask actually, Brittany, because like I don't know how you feel about this because I'm I'm convinced she's a Hufflepuff now, but I don't think everyone is. Um, I don't think she is. No? Really? You're in the camp, because not Hufflepuff? Not in the sense that it's already predetermined. I think maybe she could be. I'm not ruling it out, but I also am not steadfast in that decision just yet because I don't see why... I, I don't I don't know why anyone would choose to be in Hufflepuff. <laughs> Whoa! <What? laughs> and banned from the show. <laughs> you... My friend, why do you the air just, just made an enemy? <laughs> like, no. I mean, so would that mean that like 
Scorpio is like not going to be in Slytherin because he doesn't right. want that stigma against this him. Like if he could choose, this is the problem here is that, and it, it, it's, it's a failure of the books and there aren't many of them, but like, you know, all the Weasleys are in Gryffindor, but like they are their own people. And we know this about them. They are each of these kids, every kid who is somebody else's child, whether they have brothers or sisters or anything are their own people. But they're they're often placed in the same houses as their siblings, as their family, as their parents, as their family members. Why? Because, you know, on one hand, sure, you're like your parents, uh, but ultimately it's supposed to be about where you will thrive academically, you know, in a school setting. And, and you know, there are different types of learning. And I think that's as diverse as people are themselves. So So why does it exist that there's this trend that, all the Weasleys are in Gryffindor. And then if it is that Rose Granger Weasley is not in Gryffindor or Ravenclaw and she's in Hufflepuff, I want to know why. I want it to be explained in this play. Yeah, because I think that Draco is very much a product of his parents. And so him being sorted into Slytherin made complete and absolute sense, especially for sense. where the story needed to go. Yeah. But if Scorpio is a product of his parents and Draco has changed that much, do we automatically assume that he's going to be in Slytherin? Fair like, point. that's where my thinking is I right now. I, 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 I feel like, well, I have a whole, we can get into that. I know it's in the dark, so I won't say, but I, but I definitely think that some stuff has changed over the past 19 years. Like the lack of a, of a war has changed people's attitudes towards the house. And I don't think they're as divided as they were. Interesting. Yeah. And I think, I think putting these kids in the other houses will help destigmatize the houses amongst fans as well exactly exactly like we've had so much gryffindor focus could you imagine if the three stars of the new one was a a slytherin a hufflepuff and a ravenclaw right right how cool would that be exactly (laughs) so let's move on to the final three the final two draco and scorpius Mm. this Mm -hmm. these two I think you're fine. They weren't as exciting as the first. I Draco has a ponytail <laughs> and like a little beard goatee thing going on. Uh-huh. uh-huh. Like, his so like his father? Uh-huh. Like his father? Uh-huh. He looks father. too much like his father. Like no, what's going on? No, like does no. he need the long hair? I guess part of it must have been to separate him from Scorpius because if he didn't have the long hair, they would look very similar. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I like I like that a lot. Uh, there's, there's no crime, uh, that exists in the world, uh, which is looking too much like Jason Isaacs as Lucius Malfoy. <laughs> uh, so I applaud the long hair. Um, and, but also like Alex Price, uh, the actor who is portraying Draco just seems to have, for me, what stands out is a way about him that I think is probably pretty, uh, accurate. You know, he's sort of a, he looks to be, he looks to have some sort of conviction, you know, on his face, which I, I imagine, you know, an older Draco would would be sort of that way. But it's also in direct contrast to his son, Scorpius, who looks either terrified or really just unsure in general about maybe he's the cursed child, Selena. Um, maybe he is. Maybe he is. Let's let's speculate. <laughs> it's a theory. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Tell me your theories. Uh, so I, you know, who knows what's going on there, but I, I do, I do have to say, I, I really, really like this. Yeah. Brittany, do you think that, um, the guy who plays Draco looks like Jack McBrayer from 30 Rock? Because I do. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. So now that you much. bring it up. <laughs> right. I don't see it. I've just seen, all, see I've just seen all of 30 Rock. I I've just see seen it. all ah. of 30 Rock. I can't. No, I don't see it. Well, maybe if he were wearing the NBC page jacket, I could see it. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe. You got to you gotta Photoshop that, Selena. You're the whiz right, kid. I will. So I am a good Photoshopper, yeah. And then, and then Scorpius, he's got a little worried look on his face. that, right. it, Or like a pouty face or like his dad, Draco's so stern in both of the photos and in both of Scorpius's, he's kind of like, like, <laughs> yep. I don't know. He well, if you were good. going to Hogwarts for the first time with Draco as your father, <laughs> like mm-hmm. everyone everybody. knows what Draco did, I'm sure. So he's he's upset that because his his everybody at Hogwarts is probably going to hate his dad from the start. I, I mean, just like Albus would be, I wouldn't want to go to school with Harry as my father. Yeah. I guess to heck with that. Yeah, just too so. much pressure. I guess so. 
And then there's there's Rose, who's just all smiles in her photos. She's just <laughs> yeah. it's because she's happy. just been sorted it's into Hufflepuff, Hufflepuff <laughs> the best house <laughs> yeah. in all of the world. Oh boy, <laughs> Brittany, right, right. Oh, uh, sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Cedric didn't have such a great time in Hufflepuff. He had a great time right up until he didn't. <laughs> he was the champion. He would have been Hogwarts's champion. Yeah. Um, but guys, I found something, and I know we were just talking about how like shallow or incomplete the images are. There is a three-minute uh, YouTube video released mm-hmm. by the Cursed Child if you haven't seen it, you absolutely must. You know what? I said it was three minutes. It's it's not. It's 90 seconds. But <laughs> but it's in my mind it lasted three minutes because it's yeah. awesome. It is just a behind-the-scenes video of them taking these photos, right? But right. there's the occasional uh, confessional-style, you know, look, and the actors are talking about their characters. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's other shots too, which we didn't see in the exactly. official release photos. Different poses, like Ron and it. Hermione about to kiss. <gasps> I saw that. I'm wondering if that was. Well, I guess they wouldn't be playing around because <laughs> the two actors aren't messing around or aren't, aren't together in real life. Oh, I see. Uh, it. I'm looking. I'm looking it's like at 45. it. Forty-five. Okay, forty-five. They're getting very close, and look, yeah, and mm-hmm. and Ron like almost dives in for a kiss. So, uh-huh. yeah, definitely not divorced. Not at the start of the play. Anyway. <laughs> not the start of the play. <laughs> and then there's another cute photo of Ginny kind of leaning into Albus and they're looking at each other while Harry just very slightly smirks and looks at the camera. I, <laughs> I like that, too, is kind of playful and fun. Ron's examining his wand. He's holding his wand confidently. Mm-hmm. Uh, but this this is really great, actually. I, I, I just think this for me more than anything like the pictures are great but like the one or two words that these actors are saying about their characters here sell it for me like this is the i don't know something about the audio hearing their voices for the first time i mean this is something that i'll probably never get to do uh because i'm not seeing the play but actually for the very first time i feel bad about that hmm. i've just seen this video yeah. like i said i'll we'll cry pair, about this video later we'll <laughs> in. so to wrap up the, fo- the the discussion of our photos here, and then we're going to get into some, some feedback from people. One last theory about this. Uh, mm. Selena is... <laughs> yes. Selena, you <laughs> believe that Rose, Albus, and Scorpius will be the new trio. Please explain your theory. Okay, yes. I mean, I, I hope, I should say, rather than believe. I just... Because I know, and a lot of people have pointed out that this is basically like the fanfic trope, but... It, I think it's a fanfic trope because it makes so much sense. Like, <laughs> we have Albus. We know now that Albus, Rose, and Scorpius are the three lead kids. Like, there's no sign of H- H- Hugo, no sign of, of James Teddy. or Lily or Teddy. Teddy or Neville or any of the other characters that might perceivably play big roles. We only have the five actors and the three – or the five adults and the three kids. And that says to me that they're that they're like they're setting up something with th- these three in particular. And I think, you know, I said before, like I feel like ni- now, nineteen years later, there's going to be a lot less interhouse like feuding. You know, people are going to be a lot more relaxed. They could be like interhouse friendships. Everyone's speculating that Albus is going to be a Slytherin. If Rose is a Hufflepuff, then maybe like either Scorpius is also a Slytherin. That's how they become friends. Or Scorpius is a is a Gryffindor or a Ravenclaw. Um, and and then I, I just feel like it, it would be so great to see First of all, Harry and Draco's children become friends because this is something that never happened in mm. the original series. Like Harry and Draco never became friends, but with Draco where he was at the end of of Deathly Hallows and then ending up on civil terms, like if their friend, if their kids became friends, that would make sense and it would just be like such a great way to pass the torch. Like I know a lot of people have said, oh, well, it's kind of like Star Wars kind of just set up this new trio. And I guess it is kind of the same thing, but it also works. Like it's such a good way to carry the story forward. You know what I mean? Like I just, I think this would be so nice. Like I would love to see this rather than brand new characters who who we haven't seen yet. So we have to assume that these three kids are, are the stars. Yeah, especially when you look at the fact that the the Weasley photo 
Weasley Granger photo didn't have the other two kids. I think that exactly. is particularly telling. And and of course Harry the Potter and one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So like the other ones have been cut out. And you know what? Here's why what you just said, Selena, has to work. Uh mm-hmm. too, is because realistically there's no other way to show just Scorpius at Hogwarts off on his own. Like what's he gonna be? Mm-hmm. Surrounded by extras, which are Scorpius's friends, and then uh clearly Albus and Rose are gonna be friends. I mean, how could they not be? Um yeah. So, you know, are they and just going to be hanging out? And if Scorpius is the enemy, then that's too similar. Right. That's mm. too, that's, that would be more similar and worse. So it's like, unless they're going to have these kids with their like separate posses of extras, you know, I think it's completely realistic that for the scenes taking place at Hogwarts, they're going to be together. And frankly, I, I don't know what quantities of scenes taking place at Hogwarts we're going to see versus scenes taking place at the ministry anywhere else. I would still prefer it actually not be too heavy handed on the Hogwarts. I want to know more about the ministry. I want to know about the old characters yeah. in their present day. Hey, I think it's a great way to call back to the adult stories. It'll make for easier transitions instead of having to jump from like, Oh, we're following Albus now. And then, Oh, now we're following Scorpius. And then, Oh, let's now we can back bounce back to Draco. And then now we can bounce back right. to Harry in these scenes. We can bounce back to anyone at any time if they're together at Hogwarts. Plus them discovering things about their parents, maybe, through Hogwarts can relate back to then, you know, Harry maybe discovering things about his past or himself. And it just, I think it'll play much better if they are a trio. So I'm not opposed to your theory at all, hmm. Selena. I, I liked it. I agree. Thank you. Like, I, I really agree. And I think that's like for, for co- cohesiveness, like imagine the tri- the new trio, the, the silver trio getting into all kinds of stuff at Hogwarts and then their parents have to react to that together that brings draco more into the plot you know yeah we got some feedback here from our supporters on patreon gabrielle said when i saw the harry ron rose portrait i was like what is life are we doing this again (laughs) we're doing this again we're going back we never left really i finally got (laughs) excited about the cursed child because damn it i love that world too much so there's somebody who sold thanks to those photos uh, Stephanie, I agree. Stephanie says, I love the cast pictures. The only thing that bothers me is Hermione and Ron. They just look extra old. <laughs> they should be 35, but they look at least 45 or older. I won't be seeing this in London, but if it comes to New York, then I'm all over it. I don't normally see plays. Would they use the same cast in London on tour or would they cast new people? It's a tough question. I mean, it, I guess it depends on how long they're performing in London. Mm-hmm. for it's got to be at least a year or two um so so some people maybe will come over but maybe not everybody it is a big cast so there have to be some changes it, yeah i mean it it just has to do with contracts and and stuff you know if the actors are busy if they have anything else booked uh the other thing about about theater too is there are potentially hundreds if not thousands of performances uh that that these that each of these actors will do uh mm-hmm. i saw a lot of um discontentment on my uh facebook feed today because lin manuel miranda uh tweeted his end date for hamilton and it's just like you know how many performances that man has done as alexander hamilton at this point you know it's it's in it's in the hundreds if not thousands and you know, eventually actors retire from roles and they get recast and there's understudies as well. So, you know, I, I, I honestly couldn't say uh, how long each of these actors will last in their roles. But the odds are that if it's in a ge- different geographical location, I think the majority of them will be changed out. Mm. Uh, and and, and if for no other reason than union rules and, you know, working in different countries. And and now as well, we're entering this phase. And I understand why that might be like hard for people who maybe, you know, had their entry to Harry Potter via the movies as opposed to the books because they're so used to having faces um, to these characters. But I, we're, ent- we're entering a time now where the roles are going to are going to be passed on. Like, you know, yeah. you take something completely different like Shakespeare. Uh, <laughs> but like, you know, you have like a million Hamlets or a million Macbeths or whatever and that it's a role and you want to see how that character plays that role. And now I feel like we're coming to this with Harry and Hermione and the kids and everything. When the play keeps going, we'll see different people take on the role and we'll be like, ooh, what kind of Harry is that going to be? You know? Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. 
Um, little other, a couple other pieces of feedback here. Uh, Katie says, as far as Hermione keeping her last name goes, I'm not surprised. Many academics do this because they have publications written under their main names before they're married. We don't even know what she, when she and Ron settled down, but I feel sure she would have been published very early on. Ooh. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah. So there's some feedback there. Thanks to everybody who sent those in. Photos aside, there was some other Cursed Child news. First of all, I just wanted to mention that Barnes & Noble, the major book retailer here in the United States, has started to announce their Cursed Child midnight release parties. Uh, Per your urging, right? Sorry, what? Per per your urging. Like, you were reaching out to them, right? Oh, Uh, no, no. They're starting to put signage up in their stores now. Oh, cool, 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 cool. I've seen it in two stores now. They're they're doing parties that start at 7 and then at midnight. (laughs) <laughs> and speaking of Chris Child Midnight Release Parties, Eric, Micah, and I uh, will be down at GeekyCon in Orlando in July for their Cursed Child Midnight Release Party. And we're going to be helping uh, them host it along with the folks of uh, Surprise! Live MuggleCast appearance, everybody! <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, it's this been is... a few years. So. Selena, you were there the last time in I 2012 was. in Chicago. Uh, it's been four years and there's not a year that goes by when people don't ask me, uh, it, it, they ask me two questions. One, are you going to this, uh, unnamed Harry Potter convention coming up? I say, yes. They said, is MuggleCast going to be there? Uh, <laughs> I can never say yes, but this time I can finally say yes. MuggleCast will be there. GeekyCon, which is in Orlando, Florida, uh, the weekend of Harry Potter's birthday. It's, I think, the 29th to the 31st of July this year. Yeah, and you can sign up. Uh, if you go to geekycon.com, you can find info on their Chris Child party and uh, pass party or uh, conference passes information. That, that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> So, one other news story here, and then we're going to make our second round of Cursed Child predictions because we did a first round uh, last episode, and now final episode, final chance, we're going to be making our predictions. Before you know everything, you just have to talk for hours about what it is and what it isn't next episode. <laughs> we'll see. Okay, I'll listen to that. I don't know. I feel like a lot of people won't be want to be spoiled, so we're going to have to figure out what to uh, do okay. about that. Mm. Eric wants to be spoiled. I do do not. It's going to be a really hard two months working with you people. (laughs) It's going to be really hard in general, because if you look like look at Game of Thrones, like the media just has no chill when it comes to Game of Thrones trailers. Like that's just fair game now. So I I feel like it's going to be social media has made it really hard to stay spoiler free. Yeah. But um, high people will not spoil anything. You well, can you that, right? well, <laughs> well, well, in in articles, but not like in the headlines. headlines and stuff. Yeah, I'm I'm not. We're not going to write like Hagrid dies in the cursed child. Like <laughs> guess who mean. died? Picture of Hagrid. <laughs> <laughs> You'll never guess what half giant died in Harry Potter. <laughs> 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 oh gosh so one other thing here on twitter's we just wanted to mention that somebody tweeted jk rowling on may 27th and asked if the cursed child will make them cry and jk rowling oh. replied if it doesn't we'll be checking your vital signs and then she <laughs> it added could kill you this play could kill you <laughs> yeah and, and then somebody said why are you like this <laughs> <laughs> And she replied, I'm a writer. If you're not feeling, I'm not doing it right. Well, Fair I mean, points. can't argue with that. Yeah, Who's going to die? <laughs> See, I don't think it necessarily means a death. No, oh, I know, I know. It's gonna... but, I mean, I yeah. cry every time I see a picture of Jamie Alexander. So, I mean, she's already yeah, done I mean, her job. Yeah, going to be all gone, drowning in tears by the end of it. Drowning um, in tears. I have to say that uh, I, I, regarding whether anybody will, will die or not, um, it is entirely possible that the type of drama that we experienced, and I think we mentioned this earlier on MuggleCast, but like because it, it's a story about parenting, uh, it could actually just hit us in the fields in a whole new way. You know, Harry Potter's never really so. been about that, about that sort of, you know, terrifying reality. So I'm, I'm kind of looking forward to, I mean, it's not it's not that all the deaths in the Harry Potter books were like, you're crying because you're in shock 
sort of why, 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 oh, why did this happen? But I'm kind of looking for a more mature reason to cry now. I want something a little bit more adult out of all this. And it can't just be because my favorite half giant just got it. Um, <laughs> you know, I want it to be a deeper kind of drama. Mm-hmm. So do I. It's death. Like we've talked about this before. Character death is, is so such an easy way, you know, to to get emotion out of you and 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 the whole like oh the parent has to die so the kid can have their story like she's done that she's been down that road you know so let's make a couple more cursed child predictions uh, so i love this i have two in light of the photos okay uh, we've all, right. all taken a lot of time to <laughs> i just thought of another ron ron will have awful fashion sense <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's canon. That's canon. <laughs> that's yeah, that's canon. canon. That doesn't count as a prediction. It's, so it's I, I think I, uh, my first prediction, I think Harry is going to be way more disturbed than any of us are thinking. He's going to be battling some demons that more than than we could have imagined. It's like because he's not in the light. Is it because he's in the shadows in the image? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. To the point where it may be crippling him. Uh, oh wow! Yeah, interesting. Yeah, I, I, I get that feeling. And then my other, we were talking about the cursed child or like the new trio and maybe mixing up the houses, what houses these kids go in. I'm going to say Scorpius is in Gryffindor. <laughs> oh, my God. That was that so makes interesting. That so much sense with his mm-hmm. face. With his He's pouty like, face. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'm so pissed. I got in Gryffindor. Oh, my God. Uh, I I think you're right. Like I I I want to say Ravenclaw only because I like the idea of them being Slytherin, Hufflepuff, Ravenclaw. But I I think you're right. I think he's going to be in Gryffindor and Albus going to be in Slytherin, and there's going to be that reversal. That'd be so cool. Hmm. <laughs> uh, it's going to be hard to not tweet that. Yeah, that Albus can. Uh, it's going to be so. Oh. You'll never. I'm guess. just blocking you all. <laughs> <laughs> now we want. We get really drunk and accidentally spoil everything on Twitter. <laughs> I can't believe Agra died. I can't <laughs> hold it any longer. <laughs> it would be worse if you just subtweeted it for the next six months till all of us oh got up. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. I can't believe when plays kill off half giants. Oh my God. Yeah, come on. <laughs> uh. Eric, what's yours? So yeah, okay, so my uh, second set of predictions is just one of them, Uh, and this is because it's an opportunity to tie in all of the upcoming, forthcoming Uh. Harry Potter works. Sorry, Synergy people, Uh, I'm going to say we will hear a passing reference to current events taking place in America and or with Ilvermorny. Now that that is a thing that exists and has been announced, I hope that at some point, Ilvermorny gets a shout-out. Yeah, yeah. Like, a, like a Quidditch match or something. I think that's a smart oh, idea. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know. I, the brand synergy thing like, annoys me. Like, what are they going to go to the theme part to? You know, it's like, oh, too much. But, <laughs> but no, I could see them being a passing <laughs> thing. Selena, what's yours? Um, well, mine is sort of related to what we were talking about earlier about the cursed child and my all caps theory. It's not it, okay. I like crazy theories, guys. So just take it with a grain of salt. But I think that Scorpius is the cursed child, mm. um, mainly because he has such a sour look on his face. I'm like that kid was just cursed, and you know it. <laughs> but <laughs> I think the I curse think... is a metaphor. But okay, <laughs> yeah. Well, Maybe, but no. I think the reason that I'm sort of so set on, and I'm not saying necessarily Scorpius is going to be the cursed child. I just think it would be interesting. But I, I just don't think it's Albus because, and I, I agree. I think it's a metaphor. I don't think someone is literally going to come and curse the child. But I think you know when, when we look at like past Harry Potter book titles, like it's never been what you expected, other than the Goblet of Fire. But that wasn't what you expected either because it turned out to be a port key. Like everything, like the the prisoner of Azkaban and like Half Blood Prince and and Deathly Hallows, like it's always been something that Harry has had to figure out. So if it's just Albus dealing with his famous dad, like I don't know, it it doesn't feel true to the form. Like I feel like the title is always a mystery in itself. So mm-hmm. I feel like there's gonna it, it's gonna be something else. Like it's either it's gonna be Scorpius or it's gonna be like some other kid or it's gonna be something else and the, the trio at Hogwarts will have to sort of bound bind together to to solve it. You know, the Rose and, and Albus and, and Scorpius. 
will be bound together because of this cursed child mystery, whatever it is. Yeah. Um, so I just said Scorpius because I think it would be kind of funny. Um, and his face kind of made me think <laughs> it was a cursed face. <laughs> oh, no, I'm cursed. Ah! <laughs> cursed face. <laughs> um so and and like it would give the the adults a reason to band together like it would give draco a reason to get involved if his son was involved with the whole curse face thing and curse oh my god i just i mean curse child thing um no i think it'll be something like that so that's my last minute prediction um mine actually kind of goes off of andrew's realization that harry's going to be dealing with some dark things and i don't think we're quite done with the dursleys yet I think Harry, because in the synopsis, it says that Harry, you know, has to deal with his past and whatnot. And I think he's going to uncover a few things, maybe about Petunia before, like, before he's digging, you know, he's digging into his mother and his father and he just uncovers something. And I I have a feeling that Petunia is going to come back and uh, have some sort of role. Finally have that role she was meant to play in the book series. Yeah. And she'll be except, blonde. Except she'll be older now, so it'll be like the Mrs. Fig role. <laughs> and they, just saying fig role was funny. Um, but uh, <laughs> the, 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 uh, I, I love it, actually, uh, the idea of that. And and some people speculated maybe Dudley would have a wizard kid. Mm-hmm. Um, he's the oh, cursed child. There you go. Yeah, I mean, he's there's, the cursed child. <laughs> there, yeah. There's almost no reason for it, uh, except that Lily, his aunt was a witch so mm-hmm. there's there is... muggleborns too so yeah so it make a lot of sense i think it could be possible i would like to see it but i'm not sure it has uh any kind of room to be part of the story in in this sort of plays scope okay. but I'd, I'd love it if it were true i'd love to see the dursleys in this i think that's a brilliant idea so there are predictions they're locked in <laughs> behind yeah. the vault the vault and maybe the cursed child is like some kind of like you know like moaning myrtle maybe it's some kind of like child that haunts the castle or or something have you seen the videos of of like anything official by cursed child on youtube has the the child in the nest yeah it looks yeah yeah yeah, yeah. very haunted i'm haunted by it i know it's a child in a nest and i think it's albus but i don't (laughs) think it's the cursed child (laughs) but he turns his head at the very last second before the fade to black on every one of their official videos and it's terrifying (laughs) okay (laughs) sorry i'm just creeped out yeah yeah, it's the curse. It has to be. And then again, we we I felt we got played with the whole it's it's not a prequel thing. Mm-hmm. She oh. see that's the thing. Forgot. She has that thing. She tricks us. Yeah, and she makes it seem so obvious, and it's not obvious. That's why it's too obvious. It's, it's you know, not, I, well, yeah. I just I just saw that horror film, The Boy, uh, the other day, and my uh, my prediction is that the cursed child's actually the boy. Okay, uh, the doll. <laughs> the <from> boy. <laughs> So we wanted to uh, plug our Patreon, which is at MuggleCast.com slash Patreon. We have a cool update. We actually got our T-shirts designs c- completed. And yes, I said T-shirts, not T-shirt. We Ooh, came up what's with this, couple... Andrew? Yes, that's true. <laughs> we came up with two designs, actually. Stephanie Falcos, who is a longtime friend of the show, helped us come up with these designs. And they were both so good. We were just like, oh, we can't pick one. We got to let the patrons decide so check out the show notes on mugglecast.com you'll see the shirts and people who are signed up for a certain amount of months will receive this shirt in the mail no extra cost so the people who are earliest patrons who patrons who signed up they'll be receiving them come august and then they'll be mailed out monthly from there but here is the caveat which is you will need to be supporting us on patreon by the end of July, you have until July to sign up uh, on our Patreon uh, for the Order of the Phoenix tier in order to get your shirt on time. We're going to do a bulk order of the shirts, uh, and we are going to get that all done in July so that we can spend the next six months sorting it all out and getting it out to everybody. Mm-hmm. But you're going to essentially pick uh, which shirt you would like. We will have your address because you will have received album art and everything will be awesome and fun and streamlined by that point, but only if you can join us by July. So there are only 150 open spots left on our Patreon to receive a shirt. And once you see these designs, I'm sure you too will flip. So for all of you who have been hesitating 
uh, or not sure if it's something that you want, these MuggleCast shirts simply won't exist anywhere else. And the history that this podcast has with T-shirts for this podcast is long and detailed. I legit did a panel on it at a previous Harry Potter conference. Just the shirts. It's a long and storied history. You, too, can be part of this legacy. Yes, (laughs) absolutely. And and that's why you should support us on Patreon and get your MuggleCast T-shirt. Yeah, one's a simple design, one's a more advanced design. We thought if people didn't like the advanced design, one is something a little simpler, a little... Little the more. advanced design is really high concept, guys. It's they're both Andrew. Great. I'm gonna Micah. look at them now. Are they on on there? Oh, they're on Twitter. Uh, they're Andrew. On, they're also on facebookcom slash MuggleCast. Yes, uh, Andrew, myself, and Micah are disguised as the three brothers from the tale of the three brothers, and we are greeting death itself. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's it's amazing work that Stephanie Valkos has done mm-hmm. uh, for us here. Um, so again patreon.com slash mugglecast we appreciate your support you also get access to lots of other stuff like bonus mugglecast installments and chapter chapter readings readings. yep and and all sorts of updates oh nice yeah thanks i like them one's blue one's red they're cool i like the blue one yeah thanks everybody for your support a couple more things here and then we'll wrap up the show we just have two emails this first one's from randy he's emailing in response to our small discussion last episode about no audiobook for the cursed child he writes after my friends and i listened to episode 291 of MuggleCast, we were appalled to hear the cursed child wouldn't be put in audio format we are full potter heads but we are totally blind there are more than seven of us in our building alone many more friends or fans too my friends and i may be a small drop in the bucket of fans but we feel like we have been told that we don't matter to rolling Without the audio format, it would take at least two or more years before another format might come out. I just wish there was a way to tell her all this. So it's a bummer of an email, and I mean, it, it, it brings up a good point that they're there. I. Well, do you think they're gonna do a Braille version? Maybe. I, I they don't... have to, surely. I I guess. We should investigate this. This is a good because we even should. if there's not there's not audio, which would be much better, obviously. Like they could they should at least be braille versions. There are of the books, I know. Yeah, I mean, I'm sorry if I'm not co- pronouncing that correctly. No, no, I think you are. I, I just looking on Amazon, I don't see a format like that available. I don't know if those are typically available on Amazon, uh, but yeah, you would think. Well, I know there is because I once accidentally ordered. When when Order of the Phoenix came out, my mom got it for me, and then we got it, and it was in Braille. Hmm. So I was like, "Oh no!" So we had to like run to the store and get one because I can't read that. But yeah, um, so they have them. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm just googling now. I'm not seeing anything coming up, but hopefully they do do that. And yeah, R- Randy, who emailed, I would say that you're not even a small drop in the bucket. I think that's a significant no. section of people who group of fans who want this story. So. So, uh, yeah, we'll keep everybody updated on that. And then one more email here. Katie writes in and she says, hi, everyone. Just wanted to send a message and say how much you all mean to me. I have been a listener for six years now, and I'm so thankful that I decided to tune in. I was always shy about my nerdier side, and MuggleCast helped me to come out of my shell and be myself. Thank you. I also wanted to forward on some information as well. I'm a freshman at the University of Florida, Go Gators, and in about a week, the theater program will play a show called Puffs, or Seven Mm -hmm. Increasingly Eventful Years at a Certain School of Magic and Magic. (laughs) There is a link to a trailer and more information uh, enclosed in this email if you're interested. And lastly, I was watching part two the other day, and I was thinking about how in Half-Blood Prince, when the Death Eaters came to Hogwarts, Harry gave Ron, Hermione, and Ginny some Felix Felicis so they wouldn't die. Wouldn't have been a great <laughs> idea for everyone to take some Felix Felicis before the final battle in Book 7. I guess giving out an upper to an entire army of people could be debatable, but I'd argue that it could have saved lives and made the whole final battle much quicker, and you could always turn the tables on the situation as well. What if Voldy and the Death Eaters had taken it? Would the epilogue be significantly different? When you poke at them too much, it falls apart. It's like when Felix Lee says, I've always thought this. Like, what if two people duel and they both took the potion? Who wins? 
You know, like it's Whoever took more of it. basically what she's asking. Yeah. <laughs> Wouldn't it just cancel each other out? I would think that would be my guess. I don't know. Maybe. But, but it, like, and as well for this, like if they can, if they knew like something was coming, why didn't they like make a bunch of feel? I know it takes a long time, but why didn't they just pair well in advance and give everyone some, you know, it's a good question. Yeah. I, I get, I suppose I would just guess that you didn't think about it in, in the urgency of war. You're just sort of, that sure. doesn't cross your sure. mind. Uh, uh, but about the cur- the puffs play, this actually has been in our ra- on our radar. We wrote about it on Hypable a few months ago, and I want to email. I want to interview the creators here on MuggleCast. Mm. Oh, fun! Because I think that would be a perfect opportunity for us have have an interview with them on the show. I've spoken with them over email before about just like getting photos from them and stuff. And they seem like a really cool group of people. And Puffs is still playing in New York. So I'm actually curious if, if the, the, the people putting it on are actually going down to Florida or the theater program there will be putting on the play themselves. I guess it's, yeah, I I can't really tell from the email, but, but the, the show is going on in New York right now. I want to talk Micah into going and reporting for us. Micah, get over there. I want to go. (laughs) Oh yeah. Brittany, you should go. I mean, I'm on 44th Street right now. I'll go. Go right now. Go they, right now. They do it <laughs> I'll a, find it. They do it a couple times a week, and I know it's been, I know it's been ex- extended a couple of times. So, huh? Anyway, this is the first time hearing about it. I love it. I, oh, really? I, I'm really excited. Yeah, I don't think we've spoken about it on the show yet because we wanted to wait until we had the interview, scheduled an interview with them. Anything beats Potted Potter. That's my theory Pot and oh, it, was so bad. it was uh it was okay okay well that does it for this episode of muggle cast the final one at least between before selena and i see the cruise oh, gosh you should play the final countdown to yeah. usher you guys <laughs> out we're gonna, be, <laughs> we're, gonna, we're gonna be changed people you may not be harry potter fans after you this, have to so. you have to live oh, blo- don't say that you have to you have to live everything blog could the change whole thing snapchat me everything beforehand and everything afterwards, preserve it all. This is only going to happen once, you guys. We will. And then we're going to hear about it all on the next one. We guess. will. Spoiler free. At yeah, least we'll do well, a part of it that's spoiler free. You won't be shoot. unintentionally spoiled. Hmm? Yeah. We might do like a full spoiler thing on hype because I feel like we should. But okay. like obviously label it like so spoiler, like, like super spoiler, spoiler. Because I feel like people will want to know. Yeah. But I also feel like a lot of people will not want to know so it's very important to keep it separate yeah and actually one thing i want to do while we're after we see part two i guess is a bunch of so selena and i are going and then a couple of other hypable people and a couple of other friends i want to maybe get a few of us together to do like 15 minutes like general mm-hmm. oh idea. my gosh we just watched voldemort return what does this all mean for <laughs> the future? he cursed a bunch of children <laughs> Uh, okay, so a couple other things. I just wanted to mention uh, Selena hosts Hypable's Hype Podcast. Brittany, you do a couple of Hypable podcasts as well, don't you? I do. I do um, Rewatchable, uh, Wanceable, and Book Hype. Rewatchable, they are currently rewatching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Going I'm on that mm-hmm. too. And Selena's on it too. Great, great. And uh, Book Hype you mentioned is obviously all about YA books. And then Wanceable is about Once Upon a Time. Mm-hmm. So you can hear Brittany on this. You know, I'm going to take a moment to plug. I don't do this too often, but I have a Star Trek podcast that I uh, actually edit. I do. Uh, if anybody out there is interested in either Star Trek or improvised long form comedy, please check out the improvised Star Trek. It is a super hilarious uh, podcast. Every episode is completely improvised from scratch based on characters that these improv actors have created and maintained for going on five or six years now. Uh, So they get, they get a title suggestion from listeners on Facebook or Twitter. And based on that title, improvise an entire episode around it. Who's the alien? What's the conflict? What's this episode about anyway? All made up by the listeners and completely improvised on the fly. So check it out. And I, I edit uh, those episodes so we put in sound effects and make it sound like it's really taking place in the Star Trek universe. You don't need to be a Star Trek fan to listen. It's like an office comedy. It's just set in space. Go check it out. Improv Star Trek on Twitter or the improvisedstartrek.com. Cool. 
And finally, MuggleCast.com, where you can get all the episode show notes you need. You can also listen to each episode directly on the website now, thanks to our revamped website. You can also Super cool. Contact us through there. You can also find a thank you page where all of our patrons are, patrons are listed. And uh, there will be transcripts. We are aware there are not currently transcripts. It's actually my fault. I'm in charge of that. I'm working on it. There will Get be transcripts. With it. Ugh, Get guys, on it. Guys, it's been so much. It's so busy. Ugh. But yes, uh, transcripts coming soon. And and that's all for this week. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Selena and Brittany, thank you again for coming on the show. Thanks, ladies. Thank you Thanks Thanks for having for us. Balancing us boys out. It's very important. <laughs> You troublemakers, it's very important. <laughs> see everybody next time for episode 294. Goodbye. Bye. Goodbye. See you Bye. on the other side. <laughs> on the other side of Voldemort's cursed return. Child. Hagrid's death. <laughs> Us getting cursed. 